Welcome into Dolphins today. I am Will Scott. Game day is Saturday night between the Miami Dolphins and the Las Vegas Raiders. The Dolphins playing Las Vegas in their second preseason game. We got the Finns coming in 1-0 in the preseason. Las Vegas coming in 2-0. They play in the Hall of Fame game, hence the uh, extra game that the Raiders have played over the Dolphins. Should be a fun matchup. It's going to be Mike McDaniel's first time coaching at Hard Rock Stadium. Dolphins home opener, preseason home opener, if you will. But it's going to be a lot of fun to see Dolphins fans back in Hard Rock Stadium. Hopefully, they'll have it rocking on Saturday night. Now, who do you got? Do you have the Raiders or do you have the Dolphins? Type LV for the Raiders or type MIA for the Dolphins. Go down, chime in. It is the pinned comment, so go down and reply to it when you get a second. Number one storyline. Is Tua Tungavailoa going to play? He did not play in the first preseason game against Tampa Bay. Everyone is asking, is he going to play or is he not going to play? Tua said that he wants to play. He said that he's a competitor, that he wants to go out there and play. Mike McDaniel adding that it's going to be a game day decision, that about 90 minutes before kickoff, is he going to make that decision if Tua is going to play? And look, I understand that you want to keep them healthy, right? And after the Zach Wilson scare, you cannot blame any team for not playing their starters, especially starting quarterbacks in the preseason. But I want to see Tua play at least one drive on, on Saturday night. Do you want Tua to play? Type P for play or type B for bench. Go down, chime in. Do you want Dolphins starting quarterback Tua Tungavailoa to play in Saturday night's game? I'd like to see him play one drive and then take him out. Literally one drive, let him ball out. Let him throw one deep ball and then take him out because you don't want to risk injury to your starting quarterback. Could the backup quarterback, Teddy Bridgewater, play? Because he did not play in the Dolphins' first preseason game last week against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He did not play due to back tightness. Um, and then Skylar Thompson woke up. I don't think he was expecting to, to start that game. Not only did Skylar start the game, but he played the entire game and played very well. Now, if Teddy doesn't play, and Skyler balls out again, the noise is going to get loud about maybe trading away Bridgewater and letting Skyler Thompson be the backup quarterback on this football team. Even better, I mean, if Teddy comes out and struggles, throws a couple picks, and Sky balls out again, it's going to get very interesting in terms of the noise surrounding that quarterback situation. However, Teddy was a full participant at practice this week. He's expected to be fine for Saturday's game. And I want him to play because when you're looking at, you know, the Dolphins QB situation, I mean, let's say, God forbid, Tua gets hurt, can't play early in the season. You don't want Teddy to come out rusty. You want him to get some experience under his belt with this offense. Now, if you're a Dolphins fan, you have come to the right place because we're bringing you Dolphins news, rumors, watch parties, post-game shows, and more. Go down, subscribe to the channel. We're going to be live on Saturday night for that game against Las Vegas. Let's talk about another quarterback, Skylar Thompson. What a debut that he had on Saturday night. In fact, and I've been made fun of in the chat sports office for saying this, it was the most impressive NFL preseason debut I have ever seen. And you might be saying, pump the brakes, Will Scott. But he played the entire game. That's very, very rare for any quarterback, much less a seventh-round pick, to play an entire preseason game. But with two arresting, with Teddy injured, Skyler played the entire game and played exceptionally well, threw for over 200 yards, no interceptions, made very good decisions, went on the road, and led the Dolphins to a 26-24 win over the 2020 Super Bowl chance. I'm just saying, start to finish, most impressive NFL preseason debut of any starting quarterback, or any quarterback for that matter, that I have seen. Now, the question is, can Skylar Thompson sustain that level of success? I do not believe it was a fluke. I don't think you believe it was a fluke either. But I want to see him come out and do that same exact thing on Saturday night at home against the Raiders. And you can bet on that game at chatsports.com slash bet through BetUS. If you use promo code DOLPHINS125, you can get a 125% deposit bonus. Great deal we're giving you. Go and take advantage of it because the Dolphins are the underdog. And much like last week, they're the underdog again. So go and bet on the Dolphins to win the game. If you want to bet the over, life too short to bet the under, that total is at 41.5. Again, chatsports.com slash bet. 
Promo code DOLPHINS125. BetUS is the best way to bet on this preseason game, on all the preseason games, and especially the best way, best way to bet during the regular season. Let's talk about the offensive line because the offensive line is probably the biggest question mark, maybe the biggest weakness on this Dolphins team. And when you look at the numbers from that first preseason game, it was rough. Uh, looking at the numbers here, we're going to pull them up in a second. So Austin Jackson actually had the highest PFF grade. Now keep in mind, you know, you see Calendish just three snaps. So take some of these grades with a gain of salt because limited sample size. But Austin Jackson was the highest. He didn't even rank 70. So 68.3, D 60.2, Panky 53.7. And then the numbers just continue to get uglier and uglier. Uh, Eichenberg was a 44.2. Dieter had, had clean snaps, but I guess PFF said his blocking was not good on the 11 snaps he had. So those are the numbers from that first preseason game against the Buccaneers. And look, this offensive line right now has zero depth. I mean, Greg Little and Larnell Coleman, for crying out loud, are competing for the backup right tackle job. That is a problem. That is a big problem. I mean, you just have no depth. It's a really big issue right now in this football team. Now let's take a look at some positive news in terms of how the offensive line did in that first preseason game. Solomon Kenley had a 85.5 pass block rate. I really, really like Kenley. He's growing on me. He looked pretty good in that category. Dieter also looked good in that category with a 78.6 pass block rate. And the stout that maybe stands out the most, no pressures allowed from Austin Jackson on his 11 snaps. You'd love to see it. Hopefully, A.J. plays a decent amount on Saturday. Now, the Dolphins did allow three sacks. Larnell Coleman, shocker, Keon Smith, and Seathan Carter all allowed sacks. The Coleman sack was inexcusable. The Carter sack was inexcusable. Keon, not great either. So the Dolphins did allow three sacks on Saturday night. But I want to see Kellen Deesh more. Kellen Deesh just had three snaps in the first preseason game, an undrafted free agent out of Arizona State, was ranked by our own Tom Downey as the best NFL undrafted free agent. He had no business being UDFA. Had a fourth round grade. I thought he was going to be an early day three, maybe late day two pick. He goes undrafted. Dolphins pick him up. Give him a lot of guaranteed money. So the fact that he only played three snaps and he's competing for a spot on this roster, I don't like that. I want to see Kellen Deesh a lot more against the Raiders. My week one grade for the offensive line is a C-. minus. It was not good, but it wasn't as bad as the PFF grades make it out to be. But again, not good. A C minus, we should not, I, I know C's get degrees, but we should not be happy with the C minus. We want to see the offensive line do a little bit better on Saturday against Las Vegas. Let's talk about the rookie wide receivers because this is a very interesting wide receiver room right now. And unfortunately, we did not see a lot of the rookie wide receivers on Saturday against the Bucks. Eric Azucan, just two receptions, both of those in the fourth quarter. Braylon Sanders, who has been Really, really good in camp. No receptions, no targets either for Braylon Sanders. So I want to see these two guys get a lot more involved on Saturday against the Raiders, especially Braylon Sanders, because Ezekiel is going to make this football team anyway. Braylon is vying for a spot. He's a long shot to make this team at this point. I want to see him get a fair shot. Hopefully he'll get some more targets and, and be able to get a little bit more involved in this offense. Taking a look at the depth chart, the final spots are going to come down between River Craycraft, Preston Williams, Lynn Bowden Jr., Muhammad Sanu, and Braylon Sanders. One of those guys I think will get the final one or two, maybe, spots on this football team. Depends if they carry six or seven. But Braylon Sanders has to get more involved in this offense on Saturday if he wants a chance to make this team. Who's going to have the better game? Is it going to be Easy e Eric Ezukan, my type E, or is it going to be Braylon Sanders, type B? Down in the comment section, go down, chime in, type E or type B. Let's talk about the cornerback composition because it just got a lot more interesting after the signing of McKenzie Alexander. Trill Williams, in my opinion, was a lock to make this football team. He's out for the year. So now you're looking at this cornerback room after that two news. So we have Xavier Howard, Byron Jones, Nick Needham. Those are going to be the starters. Hopefully Jones is ready come week one. Noah Benogany is on the roster bubble. Keon Crossan, I think, is a lock to make this team. D'Angelo Ross on the bubble, as well as McKenzie and Cater Kohu. Hamilton has an outside chance. I think Igbo is going to get cut. I really do. I think McKenzie Alexander is better than Noah Benogany. I think that Cater Kohu might be better 
than Noah Igbenogany. Igbo has not looked good in camp. He got burned in that game the other night as well. So he did not play on Saturday, or I should say Cater Co. did not play on Saturday, uh, which I was disappointed about because I wanted to see him play a UDFA out of Texas A&M Commerce that is competing for a roster spot on this football team. Hopefully he's good to go this Saturday. If not, his chances of making the team are going to be in serious jeopardy. But I really like Co. In fact, I like him better than Egg Benogany at this point. And I understand that there's a $4.5 million dead cap hit if you cut Igbo, but you have to move on, cut him, get rid of him. Let's talk about the punter competition, because that also got a lot more interesting in the last two weeks after the signing of Sterling Hoffrichter. So here is the punter competition. You have Thomas Morstead, who is a 13-year vet, and Sterling Hoffrichter, a seventh-round pick out of, drumroll please, Syracuse University. Those two are going at it, trying to see who the starting punter on this football team is going to be. And I'm not biased at all, producer Jeff Cooperstein. I'm not biased at all when I'm talking about the punter competition. Now, Morstead has had an undisclosed injury. He did not practice last week, and he did not punt at all on Saturday. He played, but he was just the holder. Meanwhile, Hoffrichter had four punts inside. Or I should say four punts total. Three punts inside the 20-yard line on Saturday. He looked pretty good. While Morstead didn't punt, I think Sterling is going to beat out Thomas Morstead for this starting punter job. Who do you got? Is it Thomas Morstead, type T, or is it Sterling Hoffrichter, type S? I know a lot of y'all are going to be saying Thomas Morstead because he's just the bigger name. Keep in mind, though, three teams have let Morstead go in the last year or so. The Saints, the Jets, and the Falcons have all gotten rid of Thomas Morstead. Maybe the Dolphins will be the next team to do so. Let's talk about the running back room now because I think a lot of people were disappointed in that performance on Saturday by the Dolphins running backs. They did not look good. There was really no impact in terms of running the football for the Dolphins. So a lot of people are, are kind of saying, well, I don't know how this running back room is going to perform this season. Here's what I would say to that. Chase Edmonds and Raheem Oster did not play. Those are arguably your top two running backs. Michelle got a little bit of time, but nobody outside of Miles Gaskin had more than two carries in that football game. That is something to keep in mind. We're looking at a very limited sample size when you look at Saturday's performance. The Dolphins just had 11 carries when you're looking at the running backs. But Jared Dokes and Zaquandre White are on the hot seat. Those two guys have to go out and have a decent game on Saturday, or they might be involved in the next batch of cuts. The roster on Tuesday goes down from 85 to 80. So this next preseason game is very important. I really like Zaquandre White. Unfortunately, he just had one carry for negative five yards on Saturday. Dokes had two carries. This is a really important game for those two on Saturday. And we'll be live on Saturday. Dolphins, Raiders watch party, 6.45 p.m. Eastern time. You do not want to miss it. We will see you there. And we're talking about the Raiders, talking about an undefeated football team right now. 2-0 in the preseason. They beat the Jacksonville Jaguars 27-11. In that first preseason game, they also beat the Vikings last week, 80, or I should say 26-20 to 20 on August 14th. They play the Dolphins on Saturday, and then next Friday, they take on the New England Patriots, who are just garbage this year. Let's talk about Derek Carr first, because Derek Carr, we have not seen him yet in the preseason for Las Vegas. Could he play? That is the question. I would love to see Tua and Derek Carr both play in this game. But Derek Carr, you know, he's he's a very, very good quarterback. The Raiders do not want to risk injury. So he's one of the many starting quarterbacks around the league that we have not seen play. But still, there's a chance that he plays on Saturday night, maybe one drive or two. The backup quarterbacks are Nick Mullins and Jared Stidham. Obviously, a lot of uh, Dolphins fans are going to be somewhat familiar with Stidham from his time in our division with the New England Patriots. He was the backup there for a few years. Now he's competing for the QB2 job in Las Vegas. Both of them have looked halfway decent in the preseason. Stidham, 18 for 30, 164 yards in his first two games. Nick Mullins, 15 of 20, 166 yards and a touchdown. So we're going to be watching a quarterback battle for the backup quarterback job in Las Vegas. We're going to be seeing that on Saturday night against the Dolphins defense. The Raiders defensive line will present an interesting test for the Dolphins. Now, this is a defensive line that's been a little bit banged up this offseason, but Jonathan Hankins, just returned to practice. I don't know if he's going to play or not. Probably not.
But I'm curious to see how this Raiders defensive line does against a pretty bad Dolphins offensive line. The Dolphins O-line has to look better this week than they did last week. Now go down and predict the score. What do you think the score of this game is going to be? The Dolphins won last week 26-24 to against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I'm going to predict a low-scoring game. I'm going to say Dolphins 17, Raiders 13 on Saturday night in Miami.